Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Geek Group. My name is Paul Kidwell, and today we're here to uh, investigate some damage that was done to Gemini. Um, the far toroid uh, was giving us a very small arc compared to the one near the control cabinet, and we came in last night, and there was a couple of things we thought it might be. Uh, the first thought was the ground wire at the base of the secondary might have been disconnected or damaged. Um, the other thought was we had a break in the secondary itself somewhere, and it turned out that's what the problem was. There's a uh, rather substantial wound on the side of the secondary. Um, we had thought maybe that it was damaged from all the stomper detonations we did uh, with the secondary nearby, but it turned out that where the damage was was on the far side of the secondary from where stomper was going off. So we're not entirely certain how it happened, but uh, it appears there may be some carbon tracking underneath the secondary in that area. The wires are a little puckered away from the uh, PVC uh, coil form. So that's going to be a project in and of itself to repair that. For the short term, we have the coils from the twins. Um, they're about six inches shorter uh, winding length than uh, Gemini's originally, original um, secondaries. So we have to retune the coil to match uh, the new secondaries we're going to be using. I have my signal generator set up to the far uh, secondary right now and my oscilloscope with a uh, small probe, a little nine inch piece of wire sitting out between the two secondaries. And as I adjust the output of the frequency on the uh, function generator here, we can see we get a peak right about there and we're at 70.4 kilohertz. Now for um, the other secondaries, the ones we were using before, as memory serves, we were at about 85 kilohertz or so. So our resonant frequency is substantially lower than where we were. Uh, this is going to give us a little bit of trouble because we're barely using enough primary windings right now, so we are going to have to probably uh, back off one more turn at the base of each coil. And the next step will be to get the resonant frequency of the second secondary and then see what we can do about adjusting the primary to make it match. Hello everybody, uh, we're back after uh, working last night. We uh, swapped out the secondaries, got that finished, put the top loads back on. Um, we also uh, added some more shielding. Uh, when, when we ran it last night, we were getting some arcing from the uh, primary to our uh, ground connection for the secondary. And we found some plastic sheeting we were able to throw in to improve our uh, insulation there. And we came up with a, uh, a neat way of uh, counterweighting the uh, breakout points so they'd hold up a little better, a little bronze fitting. And these we're setting in, that allows them to stick up and out a bit farther. Um, we're getting breakout from multiple locations on the toroid now while we're running. Prior we were just getting the breakout, coming off the breakout point. So we're actually running a lot better than we ever have. Um, the sweet spot on the uh, Variac indicator was at about 75% before. Now we're up around 95% uh, or so. So we're kind of using the full capacity of our coil. Uh, the next bit of testing we'll be doing will be uh, turning up the um, current limiter all the way up to maximum. It's set on 7 right now and it'll go up to 8. So that's the last bit of testing we'll do, but we're going to give it a shot now and show you how it's running.
This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.